Good morning, everyone. Mr. Tightline's here. We got, uh, we got a whole bunch of people here at the Honey Hole today, but they are going across to a different water source. I'm heading out here. I'm gonna plunder this all by myself. I don't have anybody with me today. Uh, goal for the day, catch a fish. Anyways, I I've been debating a lot lately whether I should record or not. And honestly, I keep going back to record everything because you never know when something magic's gonna happen. So taking you guys along with me. Let's go. I do have a lot of people ask me how I do things and uh, I guess I can take a moment to do that I rig my traps I prefer traps with a long neck over the low profile ones for various reasons mostly for visibility on windy days the low profiles are good but um, I just prefer a trap that goes up and like this and cross and also I prefer a white fishing line uh, I have a couple that are black or dark green and it's harder to see where in the hole the line is going and if it's going white just tends to stand out better i use these little line bobber things you can get them in the fishing section or at like uh, donnie at fishtails in barnstead he sells them uh, walmart sells them a whole bunch of places sell these uh, it just helps me mark my depth so and i'll get into that in a minute right now i'm just checking the shiner so i run that to a between 12 pound and 20 pound um, fluorocarbon leader fluorocarbon sinks and uh, there's no stretch and it is uh, it's what I have left over from the fishing season so that goes in between about a foot and a half well, foot and a half to two feet probably two feet of that I run a an egg sinker or a uh, s slip weight I don't know what you would call this bullet weight there you go I run a bullet weight in between there then you got the uh, barrel swivel. This is so that when the fish goes around, it doesn't tangle your line up. And then the same amount of length of uh, more fluorocarbon to a two aught octopus hook, uh, wacky rig hook, and then your shiner, which he kind of wants some air. Well, so he's fine, he's huge. I'm gonna leave this trap in this hole for now. Um, what I do is I put a, this is an old school one, usually you get them with a clip now, but you put the sounder on the hook, you bring it all the way down until you can feel the weight go away. And then I measure usually about a foot and a half between, usually about this much distance right here, right there, between where the weight goes away, right here, where you've pinched it, and then this would be the bottom of your water source. And then this would be about a foot and a half or so up. And then I would put the line marker like I did here. So if you were to go a foot and a half from this line marker this way, you would then reach the bottom. And I don't want it on the bottom. You don't want your bait to sit right on the bottom. At least I don't. That's not how I, this is all how I do it. So it's not, this isn't a how to do it as much as it's a how I do it. And usually I like to make a fool of myself and let my flag go up all the time, apparently. So anyways, that's how I run one of my, how I run my trap. Hopefully when I go to edit that, it looks like it came out all right. I figure I can show you guys how I run my stuff just because I've been asked multiple times and this just gives me a chance to answer all that. All right, so this day is going to be shot kind of out of order, but when I edit it, it will all make sense in the end of the video. Kind of just doing a, uh, kind of a how-to video or at least how I do because I have I have a lot of people that have asked me the ways that I do certain things and how I set up my rigs and all that. So I actually, in editing this, I already did show you how I set these up, but I'm gonna show you sounding. So I take my sounder. This is an old school sounder. You usually get the clip on kind now, but either way you run it through and make sure it's secure, make sure the sounder won't come off. And I'm gonna run that until, uh, I'll bring this this is my line marker I've already mentioned I'm gonna run that until it there see that we got slack line it's tight you know some people don't 
some a lot of people that have been doing this for years are like, oh, this is so obvious. Yes, but some people just haven't done this. So you find where it's tight, right there. That's where it's tight. So I'm gonna pinch that with my finger. Now usually I think about it like this. This is the this is kind of where it's gonna sit on the ice, right around here. I don't want to bring it about a foot and a half up off the ground. So I'll pinch right there. Now that's where I'm gonna bring this marker right here. And this is where I will constantly set this trap to while it's in this hole. It's right, right there. I usually, I usually bite it with my teeth. So, sorry, huh? Doesn't help you any, but yeah, I'll set it to right there. Once I'm set there, I'm good to put a shiner on. Take my sounder off, grab a nice lively shiner. That guy's huge. That guy's small, that guy's just right. Okay. Now a lot of people have various ways they do this. They'll nose hook, they'll tail hook. I like to go just in front, just in front of the fin and only a little bit in. Clear this scale. There's almost always a scale at the end of that and it will deter, or at least will have a chance of deterring your hook sets. And then there you go. We set it to the uh, set it to the bobber. And I usually give a trap anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, upwards of 35 minutes or so before I'll move it or even check it. So there we go. We're setting it right to that marker. Let the line go in. Guide the line in. Peel this ice off. So we're just guiding the line in. Now once you put this on right here and you go into this water don't go in fast there's a chance you can float that line up and put it back on the spool we don't want to do that that's a no-no i like keeping the spindle away from the oh yes hit myself in the face i like trying to keep the spindle away from the the wall of the ice so that it doesn't get caught up check and see if we have any flags no flags okay here we go. I set it up. It's ready to rock and roll. <clears throat> Something to consider. I know a lot of people like to sit a lot, but I like to move a lot. Jacob and I and a few others have been known to walk 24 to 26,000 steps a day, equating to, equating to over 10 miles. What I'm getting at is, that flag over there, I got a small mouth like a half an hour ago, but I just felt like moving it. I just moved it over to here literally two minutes ago. And I've done that a couple times, even today, and, and I do it all the time. It's, you, in the winter, you drop it right on their heads. Always good to keep moving, especially if things aren't happening. Find the fish. You find the fish, you drop it right on them, usually they'll, they'll bite. Another thing worth mentioning, since I'm making this video like a how-to, how I do, I'll just keep thinking of things and telling you them. Here's one, studying maps. Study maps using Google Earth, um, you know, Google Maps, and um, compare what you see for like points and rocks that are underwater. You can kind of see that on Google Earth or Google Maps or whatever you want to call it. If you zoom in pretty good, you can see where a point will come down and there's like boulders and rocks. You can see that through the water when you use the satellite view. I'm not talking like street view looking at maps, obviously. So use that, use that in conjunction with, um, a lot of states have bathymetry maps, um, contour maps that they show for a lot of their water sources. You can then take that, or Navionics app, or Fishbrain, they have, a lot of them have all the depth you need to find in the contour of that. So you take that while you're looking at Google Maps and you come up with a game plan. Um, take this place for example, I'm not gonna tell you where it is. If you can see where it is, then you know where it is and you know what kind of fish are here. There's a super main point right there. It comes out, comes this direction to me and it works from shallow to deep, um, downwards of like 17 feet deep. I target for bass between six and 17-ish feet. That's what I usually target because I don't fish huge lakes with huge depths, but 
when I fish, you know, anywhere, that's kind of what I'm targeting, especially in the winter. So over here, there's also a mound that comes up to about six feet all around. It's right around 11 or so feet. So I'm thinking, and then there's a bowl that's like 20 feet right there. And it just goes around right there. So I'm trying to work on any of those main points and those ledges. Um, you got that mound right there. It comes down to 17, kind of comes back up over here where this main point comes out. Stuff like that. Stuff like that's juicy. You know, over there is straight sand. Um, it's very gradual from a foot to, you know, nine feet or whatever way out. Um, not what we're looking for when we're going for bass. Not what I'm looking for when we're going for bass. Just this whole time, just remember, this is how I do things. Um, and I'm just kind of explaining. So, like, there's one there, there's one over there, uh, there's a major rock line that goes from here all the way back to the boat launch and comes out. I just know this place, I've run sonar, my Lorance sonar through here, and I fished it a lot, so I really know it in my mind. So I know there's, like, between 12 to 15 foot depth, and I know right around where it contours, but it comes out, and it goes right down all the way to that boat launch. Usually I'll start my day here, and then I'll start working my way down that edge, um, which actually I'm about ready to do with that trap. I'm gonna move that trap down over here, and then I'll take another trap eventually over here, and I'll start moving it over there. Um, but I find those pockets between my real sweet spots, like 10 to 15 feet. That's like my sweet spot, and I'll, I will put those in that area. Um, if it's too shallow, I might give it a try for a quick minute, but I'll take a mental note that, hey, that's too shallow. So there's that. I, I know there's people that'll fish like, you know, if, if you're in Winnipesaukee, New Hampshire, let's take for, for uh, an example, and there's some really deep spots. I know people will fish 30 to 40 feet targeting smallmouth and white perch, but that's not really, I mean, I love smallmouth, but I, I target all, I target smallmouth and largemouth. And I have to say, I prefer largemouth. I don't know, everybody has their preference. Smallmouth fight great. I just like, I just like largemouth. Um, so anyways. I stay in that certain range. We got a flag. Oh, I think it's moving. She's running. All right, something's on there. Spool's running. Pick up right here. S slightly set the hook as soon as I get it. That's a bass. That's a bass. For sure, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's a bass. And there it dies. Let it go through the fingers whenever you feel like it's gonna take off. I don't know why this became a tutorial, but I guess probably because I'm out here by myself. <laughs> but yeah, anytime you'll feel the resistance when you're pulling it in. But once it starts really pulling, like it's gonna actually run away from you, you have to let the line slide through your fingers. Don't let go of the line. Oh, there's my bobber. Make sure that don't get caught. Leader, nice small mouth. He ran again, so I'm letting him go. Here we go, I think I'll get him this time. Nope, he's diving again. I don't have, checking to see if I had more flags. Nope. That's not the biggest smallmouth, but he's fighting like he's, like he's a donkey. It's tiny. Come on, come on. Yeah, he's like two pounds. <laughs> there we go. Got him. All right. Any flags, no flags around. Okay, there's the hook. There we go. And I didn't get skunk today. No skunk for me today. Nice small mouth. Nice small mouth. Down she goes. Reset the trap. Now, I gotta take note that that flag, that flag over there went off and this flag went off. So these two went off. That one could probably go off. I might wanna move that one and maybe that one. I'm gonna give it a little bit. I'll do a trap check. 
I literally just set that flag and started to walk away. And it went up. I just drop it on a fish's head. That'd be cool. It's not running. There's a fish there though. What is that? Is it? Yeah. What the hell? It's a pickerel? Holy crap. No. It's gotta be a pickerel. Oh, it's a small mouth. It's a small mouth. Not a bad small mouth. Nice. Okay. It acted weird, but man, I guess I just dropped it right on him, huh? Wow, all right. Not that big. But I literally dropped it right on its head. <laughs> That's fun. Nice. Swish. Move that one. Set that one. Uh, hey! Oh yeah, it's running. It's a bass. Small. Maybe not. I don't know. They fight good. Yeah. There we go. That's almost a three. Oh, he has another line in him. This guy's broke someone off before. Look at that. We got my line right here. Whoop. My fish that I think I can get some more use out of. If he'll let me. Now, you have a whole nother line in you. Look at that. So I'm gonna fix that. All right. Can I see it? Yep. So as you can see, there's another hook and line in the throat. I go through the gill, grab onto the hook, give a quick rotate, and this works 100% of the time. As long as I can see the hook, I can get it. There we go. Not only did I catch a nice bass, but uh, that looks like one of my old hooks too. It really does. Look, that's that's got to be one of my hooks or Jacob's hooks for sure. But uh, she's probably two and three quarter. I'll give it a quick wait. Yeah, maybe two and a quarter. Yeah, two pounds, two ounces. Smell good. You smell bassy. Thank you very much, girl. This is my last move from over there. I had gotten... I'd gotten hit on that flag originally, then this flag, then that flag. I moved that one over to here, caught two off of that, one off of that. Nothing had happened over there. I just moved this over here and flag. Oh, yeah, I took some line way to the side. It's way high up to the side. That's definitely a fish on. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. It didn't spit it. Nope, it's running toward me. It feels big. Oh. Feels like a big fish. Just uh, dove. Might not be big, but man, it felt like a total tank. No other flags. That's a nice small mouth, probably a couple pounds. It hit like it was five pounds. <laughs> I'm gonna go grab that flag and bring it this way then. He doesn't wanna come in. Smally mouth. Nice. That's probably the better best one of the day. Oh yeah, that's right down in there, huh? Boom. Two pounds, two ounces. Are you the same fish I just caught a minute ago? <laughs> uh, nice fish. All 
right, let's reset the new hole. Just coming over here to move this over to there. Whoa, looks like it's rocking. There's a little wind, but it also looks like it's rocking. And it is. It's going that way. Oh. Yep, got it. Well, can't say I'm gonna move this trap now. There it is. Oh, bleeding. Let it get back. Hey, sorry I didn't show it to you. It, uh, it was bleeding and water stops. See, with humans, air coagulates our blood with uh, fish the water coagulates their blood. It's running hard. That feels good. That feels like a decent one. I was running that way into the cove. I just doubled up on myself here. It's definitely a bass. It's not that big, I don't think, but... in a new spot. All right guys, there you have it. It is time for me to break down. Breaking down a little early, it's about 2.30. I was gonna stay till about four, but I realized it's National Pizza Day and I should probably bring a pizza home. Um, <laughs> that and the flags have really stopped. I lost that last one at that hole right there and uh, that kind of bummed me out and we're not doing anything. Uh, I gotta save some energy, but that's it. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all the amazing things. And remember, until next time, keep those lines tight.